come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. To the fear you can hear. For the four centuries before Christ, a remarkable combination of priests and monarchs established one of the most astonishing cultures in the world. The rulers were the pharaohs of Egypt, and they left an enduring series of monuments behind them. The Sphinx, the Pyramids, the temples of Karnak and Luxor, and, most strange of all, their mummified remains embalmed by a process lost to modern science. This is the story of one such mummy and the eternal curse she left to be visited on any violator of her tomb. Our mystery drama, The Pharaoh's Curse, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin. And stars Kim Hunter. Nineteen twenty four, fifty years ago, belongs to another world. Certainly in the Middle East, almost midway through the period of the great archaeological excavations that make Egypt a mecca for tourists from all over the world. And in that era, no singer and entertainer reigned more supreme than Diane Elliott, the toast of two continents already, and now in the process of conquering a third with an engagement at Shepherd's, world-famous hotel in Cairo. You going to sing again, Miss Elliott? Uh, no, really. Five encores is enough. Uh, never enough with you. Asking for anyone is already too much. Uh, of course, you must be tired. I uh, know, but I don't want the audience to be. If you'll excuse me. Uh, would you excuse me first? Hmm? There is an old friend of mine here tonight who would very much like to meet you. Could I presume to ask if you would join him as he asked for a drink at his table? Well, who, who is this friend of yours? Sir Geoffrey Lunscombe. The famous archaeologist? He's still alive? I, I mean, well, he, he He's must He's quite be. old, but most active. Uh, uh, would you ask him to give me ten minutes and then come back to my dressing room? Just a moment. Uh, come in. Uh, Miss Elias. Sir Geoffrey? Guilty as charged. Oh, dear. Did I sound forbidding or something? No, not at all. It's just that I feel I'm intruding. Oh, not at all. I, I hope you'll excuse me, though. I, I've started changing because tonight's the end of my engagement here, and I have to start packing. Well, then you'll be leaving Cairo. Well, no, no. Not for a few days. I hope at least a week. I've wangled a little gap between engagements because I want to do some sightseeing. Uh, good, good, excellent. It makes it so much easier for me to ask what I want to ask. It's amazing. What? You, my dear. With your robe pulled tightly around you and your hair swept back so severely from your face. Yes, yes. Absolutely amazing. Uh, well, I... Uh... Let me uh, tell you why I'm here. Have you ever heard of the Princess Hasiba? No. Well, it's not too surprising. She was, you understand, a little before your time. Approximately 4,000 years. Hasiba, the gazelle-footed trailer of perfumed musk... Hasiba, the doe-eyed, radiant perfection of the three worlds. Mm, I thought you were an archaeologist, not a poet. Well, not I, my dear. That's uh, Totmes the fifth, her husband, the pharaoh. And he was right. She was, until then, at least the most exquisite woman who ever lived. And when she died, at 19, the pharaoh was so crazed with grief that he stripped himself of all his wealth and turned it into jewels with which he filled her burial casket to the brim. 
She was buried with all the honors of a pharaoh, and the door to her mistaba sealed forever with an undying curse. The, uh, mistaba? The, uh, the burial chamber. And the curse? This chamber holds the jewels of my kingdom. Jewels beyond number and one beyond all price. Who breaks this seal forever seals his doom. He will walk no more among the living nor find his way among the dead. Hmm. You almost make me believe that. Well, I, I almost believe it myself. Perhaps it's why I've taken the liberty of coming to you. I don't understand. Oh, why should you? Let me explain. Fifteen years ago, I discovered the small pyramid that covers the burial chamber. Three times on different expeditions we have excavated with no success. This time we have managed to isolate the Mastaba itself. In spite of every kind of miserable luck. Cave-ins, men injured, crews deserting. But at last, within the next few days, I'm convinced... The entrance will be found. Oh, how exciting. How wonderful for you. And Hasiba. I hope she isn't a disappointment. Was she really so beautiful, do you think? Incredibly. Her face shamed the shining sun and the day was lit up by the light of her countenance. You know, you sound as though you'd actually seen her. I have. You have? Oh, yes, yes, my dear. For every description fits you. <laughs> well, Sir Jeffrey, I'll, I'll have to admit that's about the prettiest compliment I've ever been paid. And the truth. Now, look, look. Uh, wh- what is it? An ivory miniature of Hasiba, hand-carved. How beautiful. Exquisite. Isn't this? Perhaps now you can see, Miss Elliot, why I can easily believe in reincarnation. It's why I asked to meet you. I've devoted the last best part of my life to unearthing this tomb. And I've come to be afraid of a curse. And to believe profoundly in the power of good omens and luck. I need that luck. And I think I found it. I know you are my luck. Well... How can I help you? Come as my guest to the diggings for a few days. Open the chamber for me. I think your touch will ensure success. Out of so many, that's the greatest compliment of all. How can I refuse? Uh, uh, Just a moment... Oh, driver, good. Come in. Uh, now, all I'm taking are these two bags, and... You are not the driver I engaged this morning. No, Miss Elliot. Then why? Allow me my credentials. Inspector Hasid of the Cairo Police. Police? If you doubt me, call Ahmed. He will vouch for me. Hmm. Now, uh, may I ask a few questions? Well, of course. You had never met Sir Geoffrey Lonscombe before the night before last. Oh, uh, that's correct. But you are planning to visit the diggings? Yes. Why? Well, <laughs> because he invited me to. Just as a guest? Of course. For a few days, correct? Well... Now, let's not make anything out of that, Inspector. He is about to open the tomb of some ancient Egyptian queen, and I am intrigued. I've never had the opportunity to meet a 4,000-year-old princess who's supposed to look like me. Now, what's wrong with that, and why should it interest the police? This thing is difficult. First of all, let me warn you that there may be possible danger in your visit to the diggings. What danger? I do not know exactly. But if you are to go, will you let me go with you as your driver, incognito? Why? Partially to protect you. And partially what else? That is what I want to find out. 
Do you have any knowledge of firearms, Miss Elliot? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. I used to do a lot of hunting with my father. And small arms? Yeah, we had a pistol range. I'm a pretty good shot. Oh, could you handle this if you had to? Uh, for protection only, I mean. Oh, Webley, isn't it? Six clip? It would fit a woman's handbag. Okay. Okay, but I'm not interested in running around playing with guns. Last night, at the diggings, there was a fatal accident. Not not Sir Jeffrey. No, 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 no. One of the new digging crew. Now, for everyone's safety, I need an opportunity to investigate that accident quietly, without publicity. You could offer me that chance. And put my own neck on the line? No. There's little risk for you. But, of course, I cannot tell you there is absolutely none. Well, what is it you think's going on out there? I am not sure. 4,000 years ago, if we are to believe the papyri, the written records, Totmes buried with his wife uncounted millions of dollars in jewels. But neither she nor the jewels have been exhumed yet. We are told. And yet, a man is dead. Where was this man found? Near one of the many statues that ring the pyramid. Far from the tomb itself. Well, so what has that to do with... Um, murdered? Not by any human agency, apparently. The man was crushed, as if broken in the arms of a... something beyond the natural power of things. However, the, the police are less interested in the man himself than what was clutched in his hand. What? I have been selected to investigate this matter quietly and anonymously. Uh, will you let me go with you? You're, you're kind of daring me, aren't you? Pardon? You don't want me to refuse. I don't think you are in any real danger, Miss Elliot. And I need a cover. Okay. Let's go adventure. Just tell me one thing first. What is there for the police to investigate? What was it the man had clutched in his hand? A diamond of great beauty and great price. What kind of diamond? Now, there's just the whole point, Miss Elliot. A very special kind. For no diamond has been cut like this in the last 4,000 years. <laughs> tomb sealed fast for 4,000 years, where a princess lies in a coffin filled to the brim with precious stones of incalculable value. Could this diamond be from a tomb as yet uncovered, or was it some random discovery? And if it were, what inhuman agency, with a power beyond all human scope, mangled and destroyed the unfortunate man who found the strangely cut diamond? I'll return in a few moments with Act Two. Southwest from Cairo, riding across the hot white desert sands in the jeep driven by Inspector Hasid, a tool scarf bound across her mouth and nose against the stinging sand, Diana Elliott wonders what whim drove her to this strange adventure. And then, to herself, honestly, she admits what it is. She is tired of the never-relaxing discipline of her life, the touring, the center of applause, the sense of being trapped. Suddenly, she is a free soul, off on an uncharted adventure, ready for anything that comes her way, as long as it is new and different. Miss Elliot. Oh, you know me? Yes. And you more than live up to what I've heard. Can I give you a hand down? Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's uh, more than a hand. Both. Mm. Brother, the old boy was right. About what? You. And our 4,000-year-old lady. 
Uh-huh, perhaps. But I'm not 4,000 years old yet, and I can stand by myself, Mr... Irving, John Irving, I'm Sir Jeff's assistant. He asked me to look out for you. Oh, great. Could we start by having you let go of my waist <laughs> so I can breathe? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where's Sir Jeffrey? I had to go into Cairo with the English mail and in connection with an accident we had here. Oh, yes, I know about that. You do? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I read about it in the Cairo newspaper. Oh, well, let's get your bags and get you settled. Do not worry, I say. I will take care of them. Oh, fine, driver. Uh, Miss Elliot's go into the big tent with the canopy. Uh, you can bunk down with the crew over there. Any one of the three tents near the diggings. Very good, I say. You want to go freshen up, Miss Elliot? Oh, no, no. Everything is too new and strange and exciting. I want to explore. Okay. You want to walk over and have a closer look at the pyramid? I love it. If I'm not keeping you... No, you're not. I, I've been designated as the official reception committee for the afternoon. Uh, tell me, have you found the tomb yet? Uh, not quite, but we're close. We started to uncover what appears to be the entrance to the outer chamber this morning. The diggers are working on clearing that now. It's hard to believe. And we're almost there. Fifteen years ago, this entire pyramid was buried in sand. So Jeff uncovered it on the two former expeditions. Oh, what a tremendous job. What are these statues that stand along the bottom row of stones... Those are various Egyptian gods. Let's see, starting at that end. Um, Toth, the recorder. Horus, god of truth. Mot, goddess of justice. And Osiris, the king father himself. Uh, two, three, four, five. Uh, hey, you, you missed one. This one in the middle. Well, I'm sorry, so I did. Mm, I can't blame you. He's so ugly. A brutal, snarling face. What does he represent? That's Anubis, the jackal-faced god. Officially supposed, coincidentally enough, to be the greeter of the dead. I don't think I'd care to be greeted by that, dead or alive. What do you mean, coincidentally? Well, this is where... where an accident happened. You mean where the man was killed? You heard about that? Who told you, Sir Jeff? No, it was, um... my driver. Oh, Bad news travels fast in this country. In any country. Ooh, what a cruel, bestial face he has. What does greeter of the dead mean? He weighed the hearts of the dead before welcoming them to the great halls of Osiris, the judge and the sentencer. Mm. <laughs> oh, he's not quite as bad as he looks. Do tell. I, uh, I think I'll have that hand down now. Oh, here you are. Watch it! Quick! Behind the statue, let me shield you. You all right, Diane? I'm all right, Mr. Irving. <laughs> well, couldn't we make it? John, I called you Diane. So you did. It just slipped out. Did it scare you? <laughs> If you mean the explosion, of course it did. Dynamite. What was the dynamite for, John? That's just what Sir Jeff's going to want to know. He's going to be hopping mad when he gets back. Damn that Sargon. Who is, who is Sargon? Our esteemed Egyptian colleague and so-called archaeologist who's been gumming up this expedition ever since it started. Gumming it up? Yeah, he resents all outsiders who come here on what he considers his territory. Well, you can't blame him, I suppose. It's his country. But just the same, the guy's pretty hard to take. For some reason, he wants that tomb to remain sealed. With that dynamite he set off, maybe he's just gotten his wish. Now, come on. I'll see you back to your tent so I can go find out just what damage has been done. Hi, dear Miss Elliot. I'm sorry I was responsible for making dinner so late. Oh, it was worth waiting for, Sir Jeffrey. This Arabian coffee is delicious. Uh, what was all the trouble with Sargon this afternoon? Well, this morning he wanted to dynamite the entrance open. I said we should wait till you got back. I knew you wouldn't go for it. My God, if we had a cave-in, the whole tomb would have been reburied. 
say nothing of the possible damage to inscriptions inside. So? Well, he got so red-necked about it, I told him he could set the charges in case. Oh, that was foolish. I know, sir. But I never thought he'd be pig-headed enough to set them off on his own hook. That is it, I. Oh, Sargon, Sargon, my dear fellow. Come in, come in. Join us in uh, coffee. I do not break bread among my enemies. What with the infidel? Now, wait a minute. No, 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 Sargon. I know you're upset, but there's no need to be rude. I don't believe you've uh, met our guest. Miss Diane Elias, Ali Atman Ben Sargon, one of our most noted Egyptologists. How do you do? Your servant, Anaisa. Now, uh, <clears throat> about this thing this afternoon... Mr. Irving said the orders came from you. Why, you... Uh, John... If he denies that, he lies. You think I'm going to sit still now for sit that? sit down, time? sir. I will not have this bickering in front of a guest. It can be settled later. In the meantime, fortunately, there's been no damage of consequence and the way into the tomb has been opened. No harm has been done. A great deal of harm has been done. The crew has deserted... What? That is what I came to tell you. They have taken all our transport and left. I tried to stop them, I but... I bet you did. Now, look, sir, just, Jeff, I... Just, just, just a moment, John. Oh, why, Sargon? Perhaps they are wiser than we. A small hole was blown through to the inside. And out of it, they say, comes swirling a fearsome efreet that grew ten times taller than a man and verged a cold freezing breath from his mouth that carried death in the air. They ran in terror from the ancient curse. They knew the stench of evil in the air. Well, that's that's preposterous. As an archaeologist, you know the fetid odor of death is always present when a tomb is opened. Bunch of simple-minded nitwits. Perhaps. Except that as a simple-minded Egyptian, I agree with them. Oh, you intend to leave On the to... contrary, I intend to stay. I was referring to the stench of evil. And not from the graves of my ancestors, which I shall remain to protect. Why, that son of a... You're going to let him get away with that? Uh, John, I'm sure it was a misunderstanding. Now bear with me, please. Tomorrow may be the end of a long, long dream. Now let me go and pacify poor Sargon. You intend to open the tomb tomorrow? Well, the main breach has been made. I'm hopeful it can be managed. Well, then we must have the press here. I'll go into Cairo tonight. The men have taken the trucks. Well, they're still Diane's Jeep. Uh, if I may borrow it? Well, it's not really mine. It's my driver's. Well, whatever you decide tomorrow will be an exciting day. I shall hope, Miss Elliot, to introduce you at last to your long dead image. This must come to pass, for I still believe in you as my good luck. John, you'll see Miss Elliot to her tent? Of course, sir. Till tomorrow, then. Good night, sir. I'd still like to have it out myself with that surly... Look, let Sir Jeff handle it, John. I want to drink in this strange night. The atmosphere or the general excitement? Both. Everything. The air, the place, the the time. That enormous red moon. What makes it like that? Sand suspended in the air filters the spectrum. (laughs) Such a lot of sand. It's a whole lot of moon. So quiet. Mm. The air is heavy. Sleepy? No. Don't go in. Stay with me. (laughs) Uh, That might uh, be really dangerous. (laughs) Why don't we grab the jeep and go into Cairo? We can't use the jeep. Why not? It belongs to... to an inspector of police. Look, please don't say I said anything, but he's here investigating the accident. Sub Rosa. You won't tell anyone. Sure, if you ask me not to. But I still don't see why we well, can't... Uh, then ask Inspector Hasid if you can borrow the jeep. But I won't go with you. I'm too tired and... and too excited looking forward to tomorrow. 
But funny how heavy the air seems. I can imagine why those men felt a dark weight, almost like death in the air. I'll be glad to see you tomorrow. Good night, John. Good night, Diane. Diane? Diane? What is it? Are you dressed? Can I come into your tent? Uh, yes. I was just starting to go to bed. What is it? Look, I, I don't want to alarm you, but the men were right. There is death in the air tonight. Well, what now? Oh, it's nothing to do with the legend. Totally atmospheric. A Samoom is on its way. We must race it back to Cairo. But, but the tomb... The tomb can wait. As it has waited for centuries. Oh, but there won't be room in the jeep for all of us. Only you and I are going. And the others. Sir Jeff and Sargon won't leave the tomb. Inspector Hasid won't leave Sargon and remains to protect Sir Jeff. What does that mean? Sargon is not to be trusted. Sir Jeff and the inspector know that. But if we have to run for safety, what about them? Well, they'll be safe in the excavation. It, it's like a, a tornado cellar. That's just what this blow will be like anyways. So why can't we hole up with them? We could, if you think you can spare the time. What's that mean? A simoom. It could blow itself out in six or seven hours or six or seven days. Now, can you spare the time? Oh, of course not. I'm due in Paris in three days. Give me five minutes and I'll get my suitcases ready and we'll be on our way. to bring Diane Elliott and John Irving back within its range. And if the 4,000 year sleep of the delectable Hasiba is to be disturbed at last, on whom will the curse fall for disturbing it? On the men who planned and made it possible? Or on another woman who dared to challenge her beauty? I'll return shortly with Act Three. In the outer chamber, shielded from the wild gust and the roar of the simoon raging outside, Sir Geoffrey and Sargon have isolated and almost cleared the door to the mastaba itself. They are engaged now in cleaning up the debris the explosion earlier in the day had caused. Yeah. <clears throat> that does it. The door. The door is free. Fifteen years. And the moment is here at last. I am about to enter the tomb of Hasiba. My countrymen have waited 4,000. Come, come, Sargon, let for God's sake not in this minute. What is it? There's someone coming. They did, are a reason. But it'll be silly. It's from the outside. Why, it's Miss Elias. <laughs> The bad penny and companion turning up again. Well, what happened? You couldn't make it, sir. We just beat that old twister back here to safety. He turned around on us. Just the two of you? Yes. What happened to your driver? We understood he stayed with you. We have not seen him. We thought he stayed with you. Oh, he probably took off with the rest of the crew. Are you all right, Miss Elliot? Oh, yes. I... Well, then, let's forget the elements, the... 
momentary inconveniences and everything but the incredible, the marvelous, the unbelievable moment that lies ahead of us. We are about to enter the tomb of Hasiba. But the storm... The storm will blow itself out. We are lighting candles to illuminate centuries of the past. Come, John, Sargon, help me push open the door. I do not care to see the tomb opened. I am not surprised. Inspector Hussein. Yes, Miss Elliot. Inspector? Yes, Ali Osman ben Sargon. Inspector Hasid, with a very sore head where someone knocked me out, to deny me the sight of the tomb and its contents. By all means, let us open the door. I am not asking but commanding with this gun. Let's go, Sargon. There it is. Beyond that black aperture lies Hasiba, wrapped in her blanket of jewels. Who shall be first to enter? The right is mine. The right is Sir Jeffrey's. Don't make me use my gun. This is a moment I dread as much as I desire. Who knows what lies in that dark cave? The tomb may have been rifled centuries ago. Its artifacts destroyed the very catafalque itself. Vandalized. The curse was never idle. And then suddenly I am too old and afraid to enter. Diane? I... I brought you here as my luck. Will you risk it? And enter first. If you wish me to. I wish it with all my heart. John, take the torch and light her in. Yes, sir. Careful, Diane. Easy. What is there to fear? Who knows? The dead resent intruders. And I only hope that... What is it? Look out, eh? What happened, John? The door to the tomb swung shut. Well, can we open it? No. The counterweights locked it somehow. Hold With up me? the torch. Why? There's an inscription inside the door. What does it say? It... Well, it would take time to decipher it. Don't worry, I can guess. He who breaks this seal forever seals his doom. He will walk no more among the living or find his way among the dead. It's just what I was afraid of. Hopeless. The door can't be budged. What happened? The stone you stepped on, designed to trip the counterbalancing rocks and lock them. To get the door open now, they'll have to blast. So that was Tothme's ancient curse. That's pretty effective. Look, hold up the torch, John. Is that better? Yes. It's not a very large chamber. No. In the center there, is that... Yeah. That's the catafalque. Hasiba. Can we look? Why not? Poor little princess. Poor little rich girl. So young. Can we... Can we open the sarcophagus? I don't know. Somewhere there should be... Oh, let's see. Ah, here. It's too heavy. As far as I dare slide it. Such a big coffin for such a little girl. But... Oh, but she is lovely. The face is only a death mask. Where are the jewels, John? The jewels that filled the casket to the brim. That's right. Evidently, old Tothmus regretted his generous impulse and sneaked in later and pinched his fabulous fortune. How? I... I don't know. What's the matter with the torch? 
I'm afraid it's going out. Well, can't we light it again? No. Lack of oxygen. We've got to get out of here. Haven't you any idea how? The catafalque itself. Let's have a look. But how? Where? It's just a simple box. Except here, at the foot of it. Carved in bar relief. Oh, wait. Let me hold the torch close. Yeah, that's better. <gasps> what is it? That face. The god you showed me outside the pyramid. With the jackal face? What's his name? Anubis. Greeter of the dead. But he has another name. The opener of the ways. Diane, maybe this is it. Press it. Try it. Yes. The opener of the ways. Oh. Smell that guy. Oh. Fresh air. Look at the torch light up. And there are steps beneath. We're free. I wonder, John. I wonder. I can see it clearly now, Diane. Sargon, he's been plundering the tomb. That was the reason for all the delays he caused. He had to have time to get rid of the jewels. And now, unless we escape somehow... He's safe. Inspector Hussey won't let him go. We might as well have all the cards on the table. When I stumbled into you entering the chamber, it was because Sargon pushed the inspector against me and grabbed the gun. You can be sure Sir Jeffrey and Hasid are both dead by now. And Sargon is on his way to freedom with the jewels. Well, then it's up to us to stop him. How? What's the matter? The blank wall. This looks like the end of the road. It does, at that. How... How do we get out of this? That's all up to you, John. What does that mean? It's not very difficult to figure out. You know just where to put your hand to move this rock. Don't you, John? I? Why should I? Because you've been here so often before. You... No. I think so. And what I don't know, I can guess. You found this secret entrance some time ago. And you stole the jewels, didn't you? You've been the one that's been delaying things while you tried to figure out some way to get away with them. My jeep with me as cover was the perfect way out if it hadn't been for the sandstorm. All right. I admit it. Which leaves you with two choices. Which are? Stay here or come with me. Diane, I am more than a little in love with you. And I promise you there's a fortune packed in your jeep that could make us able to live like Totmus and his queen Hasiba. In your luggage, it could easily be smuggled out of the country. Half of it, all of it's yours, if you share it with me. And if I don't? I'll have to take my chances alone. Which includes, unfortunately, leaving you shut in here where you can't blow the whistle on me. Two choices, hmm? What else? This. What? Gun? Where did you get that? From the inspector. And don't think I don't know how to use it. Are you ready to open the door now? Suppose... Suppose I just refused. The torch is beginning to burn low again. That means we're running out of oxygen, doesn't it? Okay. You win. Here, catch it. What? I hope I didn't hurt you. I had to get the gun. What are you going to do? Oh, nothing violent. That really isn't my nature. Just leave you here with any luck. They'll break through in time and find you. Goodbye, Diane. You can't. No. Now, please don't move. I'll leave you the torch when I go. Damn, Simone is still raging. You'll never get through it. I'll have to take my chances. It's all I have left. I move back. I'm sorry. Sorry for everything except the jewels. If you could only see them. Well, here goes. Uh, you must rest, 
My dear, there's time later. No, I, I, I want to finish telling you. He was leaving, and, uh, and he had started the door of, of, of the statue base that closed the secret entrance. And then, then suddenly the wind was too strong, and he, he fell back and got caught in all those tons of stone. Just like the other man. Who... I would spare little pity on him, Miss Elliot. The other man was my brother. As I, Irving, thought he had killed me just as successfully. But I don't understand. Why did he start to come back? His return was involuntary. What do you mean, Mr. Sargon? He underestimated the enduring power of an ancient curse. He was returned to his fate. So the curse was a real one, after all. He will walk no more among the living, nor find his way among the dead. But, thanks to you, Miss Elliot, the ancient gods are satisfied, and the lady of whom you are a reincarnation will also be reborn. Asiba, the gazelle-footed, trailer of perfumed musk, Hasiba, the doe-eyed, radiant perfection of the three worlds. Why shouldn't she be reborn? I'm in favor of it. What man wouldn't be? I'll be back shortly. And we'll return... It was Nathaniel Hawthorne, one of our American greats, who said it. A grave, wherever found, preaches a short and pithy sermon to the soul. Let my comment on this tale be as brief. Let the dead past bury its past, nor pause too much to think on today. The future is what leads us on. If we march to any banners, let it be to those. 